Hey guys, it's Amanda from Amanda Reads, and I am finally back on my YouTube channel. June was an absolutely insane month for me. I finished up with school, which took up basically all of my free time, and I was working a second job, so I had a lot of 12-hour days, not a lot of time for reading, and definitely no time for making any videos. I've got everything kind of figured out now, and with school ended and the holiday passed, I definitely will be having a lot more time. So that's basically why this wrap up and TBR for July is so late. So June, like I said, was super busy. Because it was so busy, I only managed to read three physical books and listen to one audiobook. The first book I read was Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare, which is the second book in the Infernal Devices trilogy. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars and I absolutely loved it. This book really focused on character development rather than lots of crazy action and twists. You really get deeper into the characters' minds and I really just fell in love with the characters even more than I already had been in the first book, Clockwork Angel. So I basically devoured this book. I read this in just about two days and I absolutely enjoyed it. It was awesome. The next book I picked up was because the movie is coming out this month and I haven't read it yet. So I picked up Paper Towns by John Green and I've read a lot of John Green books. I think all of them now, except Will Grayson, Will Grayson. I think this is actually my second favorite John Green book, which is funny because a lot of people say that it's our least favorite. Um, the Fault in Our Stars is, is still my favorite, but I thought that this one came close to second. I absolutely loved all of the characters and the storyline, and I thought it was awesome. I'm not really sure what the problem is that people have with this book. Maybe they don't like the way it ended, but I actually think it was a really good ending. I'm so excited for the movie, but I'm a little confused because when I watched a trailer, it looked like a couple things were different than what they were in the book. But maybe I just wasn't really paying attention correctly because usually John Green's movies, like The Fault in Our Stars is the only one he has actually, um, that one stayed to how the book was. So I'm hoping this one stays true and has the same ending results. And I did give this book 5 out of 5 stars as well. The reason I read Paper Towns before picking up the final book in the Infernal Devices trilogy is because I really didn't want it to end. And so I put it off, but I did finally end up picking up Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. Now not only is this book longer than Clockwork Prince, I took my time with this book. I really like only read a chapter each time I picked it up because I was enjoying it so much I didn't want it to end so I kind of dragged it out which is why I don't really have time to read any other books in June. Um, I just thought it was a phenomenal ending and I went on to read um, the blog post that Cassandra Clare did which is after, takes place after this um, ends. And thankfully, when I opened this book, I saw that they had the family tree, and so I just like threw this on the floor because I didn't want to be spoiled. So if you are going to pick up the Infernal Devices trilogy, just know that the inside of Clockwork Princess, the book jacket, has family trees that will give away some plot twists in the book. This book made me cry a lot. Actually, something I notice is that Cassandra Clare's books actually do tend to make me shed a tear, but this one I was like full on bawling. And with Clockwork Prince, I was crying a little bit too. Um, it's just like I got so attached to the characters after Clockwork Prince that in Clockwork Princess, I was like, oh, I don't want to do anything wrong. So yeah. That was obviously 5 out of 5 stars. So I had really great luck. Um, I loved all the books I read and I also listened to the audiobook of The Help. I gave The Help 4.5 stars and I really loved it. It's told from multiple perspectives, so they have multiple readers reading the audiobook. And if you don't really know what it's about, basically it's about a 22 year old white woman who lives down south during the time when there's segregation and she doesn't believe that segregation is right and she doesn't believe that people should be treated badly because of the color of their skin so she starts to write a book anonymously about the maids in her town 
who are all African American because she respects them and she thinks that their story should be told. But she knows how much of a danger it is, so they do this completely anonymously, and so the whole story is getting all of their stories written down on paper and the struggle she goes through as she's trying to get this book published and what she's going through with her friendships at that time and how she starts to look at her world differently. And it's a very good topic, like it's pretty serious topic when you think about it, but it's told in a not so serious way, which I liked. It's definitely worth a read or a listen if you like audiobooks. So that concludes my June wrap up and now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my July TBR. July is doesn't look like it's gonna to be too much of a busy month for me. Um, I just have work part-time. However, at the end of July, I will be getting surgery on the 27th to fix my deviated septum. Finally, the right side of my nose, I can like not really breathe out of properly, and so I'm gonna get that fixed. So I will be basically just relaxing and recuperating. So just a heads up, next month, my wrap up most likely will not be on time because it's happening right before that. And I don't know what I'm gonna look like in terms of bloodiness or healing or whatever. But on the bright side, I will be spending a lot of time in bed um, recovering. So I will have a lot of time to read and relax, which is going to be really nice. I'm going to be taking about 10 days off of work just so I can be properly healed, but I'm very excited for it. To finally be able to breathe out on the right side of my nose and also to get some time to read. So let's get going to Gelat TBR. First of all, I am a little bit into an audiobook called The Good Girl by Mary Kubica and I have no idea what it's about. All I know is that so far I'm a couple chapters in. It's been told from two different people's perspectives and it's about a young adult woman who is missing and then she is found three months later but she has amnesia and doesn't think she's who she really is and all this crazy stuff. So I'm assuming the book is going to go through what happened to her and her recovery. I did not forget about the final Harry Potter book. I did start it already in July. I am, let's see, 246 pages in and I am enjoying it and I will be finishing it. So yes, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows will be completed this month. I did not end up reading Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover and I am actually going to put it off. I'm not going to be reading it this month. It's just not what I'm in the mood for right now. That may change mid-month, but I picked these books based on what I'm feeling right now. And that also goes for The Face on the Milk Carton. I read about two pages and wasn't feeling it. It's just not the type of book I want to read right now, so that will wait too. The four books I do have for my TBR could change, however I think I'll get through them and I might finish more, so we'll see. But these are the books as of now. So the first book I have is The Mysterious Howling, which is the first book in the Incorrigible Children of Ashton Play series by Mary Rose Wood. It's really short. I know this is going to be a quick, fun read, so I'm going to use this probably after Harry Potter or mid-month when I'm feeling a little slumpy because I really want to be able to get through a book. So yesterday when I was filming my July TBR I got cut off because my roommate came home and so I was like rushing through it. Um, so I want to take a couple minutes real quick to just go through my TBR and explain why I chose these books. So I talked about The Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place yesterday. Cinder was part of my first book outlet haul, I think. I think it's time that I finally read this. I'm ready to be in this world. I'm in this like fantasy-esque um, mood after reading the Infernal Devices trilogy and finishing up Harry Potter. So I want to jump into the Lunar Chronicles. I only have the first two, but if I like them, I will be buying Cress and maybe Ferris, I don't know yet. I also got the Grisha trilogy in my first book haul, I believe, and I know a lot of people read this a while ago. Um, people still talk about it though, and I want to give it a shot because I think that this is also like, I don't know, I think all my books kind of like tie in. Maybe I'm the only one that sees that, but just tie in with the mood I'm in for reading. Um, as I just like 
skim through it like it just I love the way that the chapters look like how beautiful the chapter headings are and I don't know I'm just excited to get into it and then I am completely ready now for City of Fallen Angels Infernal Devices really got me prepared for this and I'm actually excited to read this because Cassandra Clare wrote Infernal Devices after the three and I could really see her writing like matured and so now I think I'm gonna love this because of how I really loved her writing for the other three books. So those are the four books that I am planning on reading in July and finishing the audiobook that I started and finishing The Last Harry Potter. Thanks for watching guys. Um, comment below if you've read any of these books or if you're interested in any of these books or if you want me to do a review on any of those books once I read them. Thank you so much for sticking with me even though I've kind of been MIA this past month. So I hope you're having a great month so far. We're already a little bit into the month and have a great day guys.